Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me for an in time broadcast on this Wednesday, the um, some date in January. You lose track of the days, you lose track of the dates, don't you? Hope you're well wherever you may be. If you're in Greystone, she'll know it's a lovely day. Hope you're enjoying it, whatever you may be doing or not doing. And uh, if you're joining us from further afield, well, just thank you for coming. Last Thursday evening, we had a very exciting time here in Greystones. If you're in Greystones, you will know this. There was a total blackout in the whole Greystones area. The electricity just went whoosh and it was gone. Um, total blackness. No street lights, no electricity in the houses. Looked out through the window and it was just pitch black. I was on my computer at the time, which just went bang and it was off. And uh, a bit of a shock. But of course, these things happen from time to time, don't they? Your initial reaction is, is it just us? And you look out on the street and it's quite reassuring to think, well, it's not just me, it's all over the place. And uh, everybody's experienced that. So it was over about 15 minutes, then it came back on and uh, we thought that was it. But then very shortly after that, whoosh, it was gone again until, oh, until almost midnight. It was um, for all for hours, which was, which was fine. There is something about a blackout that is kind of novel, isn't it? Because you can't work on your computer, you can't watch your TV, you can't do your baking. Um, we're totally reliant on electricity in so many ways. And so we're kind of thrown back to old style. Dawn got out the, um, she got out the lanterns, which was great. We had candles. I'm sure maybe other people will, you would have lit candles as well. Uh, maybe had all other sorts of emergency lighting, but this was great. We lit, had the fire lit anyway, so we were, had heat in at least in one room. And uh, we had light, which was good, but the place was in darkness. I went to go up the stairs without a lantern. And you know, I've been up those stairs a million times. I know there's two little flights. One is six steps and one is eight. And I went up the six steps and I wasn't counting, but I thought there was one more step to go, but there wasn't one more step to go. And I went clattering into the wall facing me in the dark. When it's dark, Everything's a bit up in the air, isn't it? Maybe think about a passage from the Bible, of course, because darkness and light is a, is a big theme all the way through the Bible. Um, but particularly when Jesus come along and came along and said that he was the light of the world. He said this in John chapter 8. Jesus spoke again to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The image that Jesus is saying is a bit like, is a bit like having the lantern. He's saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, the picture here is of, of people on a totally dark road can't see anything, pitch black. But there's someone with a lantern and Jesus saying that he is this light and anyone who follows this light will not stumble or fall. They will have the light of life if they follow him along the way. If they get left behind, if they stray onto another path, if they lose sight of the light, they're bound to get lost. They're bound to injure themselves. They're bound to whatever. But Jesus said, he's like the lamp on the road. If we stay close to the light, follow the light, we'll not get lost. Isn't that beautiful imagery? That is Jesus. And for many of us, we are Christians. We know that Jesus is the light of the world. And so we fix our eyes on him. We have given our lives to him. We have committed our ways to him. We don't always do it very good very well. Sometimes we tend to stray or grow cold or get distant, but we have committed our lives to him. And so we will never be lost because we have been found, for he is the light of the world. That's John chapter 8. It's great, it moves into John chapter 9, and there's that wonderful story about the man who was born blind, and Jesus gives him his sight. It was a kind of physical reality of the spiritual reality. Jesus was the light in a spiritual sense, but here he is giving someone their sight, bringing light to their eyes, light to their whole body. 
Jesus says whenever your eyes are good, your whole body's good. But when your eyes are a bit dodgy, well, there's darkness inside. And if you can't see it all, that is a very deep darkness. But Jesus is the light for everybody. So last Thursday night, it was pitch black. And uh, we had the lights. And there was something lovely about it. But the other thing that was very stunning about it, and people in the whole area um, mentioned this afterwards, that the stars were particularly bright. Because it was a clear, clear night. And as you looked out through the window or stood outside, you could see the stars. And right up here, up here, up here, there was Orion. You know the, the constellation Orion? It's one of the most famous ones in the sky. There's the Ply. There's other things that we recognize. But Orion is just kind of four stars. And then there's three stars across the middle. Orion was a hunter. So he's Orion the hunter and three stars across the middle called Orion's belt. It's kind of his belt. And it's a very famous constellation. And it was crystal clear because there was no light pollution. The, the street lights weren't, it was just pitch black, totally black except for the stars. It was absolutely stunning. The stars are always there, of course. Sometimes cloud gets in the way. But more often than not, our light pollution gets in the way. And that made me think about how we live our lives. Because so often, Jesus is shining. His light is always there. But so many things pollute our vision of him, our view of him. Light pollution is a very serious thing, but we can fill our lives with other things, even good things, but just keep us busy or keep us preoccupied or keep our eyes off him. But once the light was stripped away from the streets, once the light was taken out of the homes and TV sets couldn't be watched and computers couldn't be used, suddenly these stars, Orion, took on a whole new dynamism. They were beautiful. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 2. This is the second passage. You can look at these when you go back, when you want to finish. John chapter 8, but Jesus is the light of the world. But then Philippians chapter 2 is a very famous passage. But then he talks about believers, people in his church. And he says this to them in verse 14. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, and listen to this, this line, in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Shining like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Isn't that beautiful? For those of us who are Christians, for those of us who follow Jesus and have committed our ways to Jesus, Jesus said to his disciples, I'm the light of the world, but he also said to them, you are the light of the world. And that's what he says to you, if you're a believer. You are the light of the world. And Paul says, you can shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life to others. If you look at Orion, I don't know if you're into astronomy or looking at the stars, I used to be. But if you look at Orion's belt, there's those three little stars across the middle. Can't miss it. If you don't know Orion, go out and have a look at it tonight, maybe. Across the middle is three stars. If you were to follow the line of those stars, the one, two, three, downwards, they point to a star called Sirius, which is the brightest star in the night sky, the brightest one. In a sense, these stars point towards this star, which is the brightest one of all. And as Christians, you and I are bearers of the light. We aren't the light, for he's the light. We reflect his light. And maybe in a sense, we point towards the greater light, the brightest light of all, Sirius, Jesus. We point towards him. The times that we're going through are very difficult for everybody. Dark times in so many ways. Our world has been turned upside down. Our lives have been turned upside down. We don't like it. We wish it were not so. But as Christians... We have an opportunity to shine in the darkness. For you and I, who are followers of Jesus, have got a hope that cannot be taken away. Our hope is in Jesus. We have a light that comes from Jesus. Everything good in our lives and our future and our eternity is wrapped up in him, 
in Jesus. And we maybe have an opportunity during these days when people can be in despair, and isolated and fearful, that we can point to him, the brightest light in the sky, the brightest star in the nighttime sky. We can point to Jesus, who is the one who is the light of the world, who brings light into people's lives, who gives people hope, direction, identity, purpose. Everything we want to be as humans is wrapped up in him, for we're made by him, made in his image. Isn't that amazing? So in the darkness of our, of our world, you, if you're a follower of Jesus, you are a light bearer and you can point to him. Isn't that amazing? So it was very exciting last Thursday night. The lights went out. And if it happens again, it won't bother me one little bit. We've got a hob that works by gas. <laughs> and uh, it's fine. But no matter whether the sun is shining outside or we live through dark times, if you're a Christian, you, you can be confident of him, that he is the light of the world, that he will guide us through this life, through all the challenges of this life, and life brings challenges to everyone. He will lead you, he will guide you, for he is your light. Isn't that amazing? So shall we pray together before, before we say goodbye and go into our afternoon? We're going to pray that we can shine like stars in the sky. We can pray that we will follow him who is the light of the world and follow the path which is dark without him. So let's join together to pray, shall we? Let's all pray. Father, we thank you that you have given us your spirit and you've given us this wonderful gift of prayer. And Father, it is our prayer. It is our prayer that we could follow you closely. Father, it is our prayer that you would shine into our lives, filling our bodies and our eyes and our minds and our hearts full of your light, your glorious light. Lord, you are so good to us. Father, if there are someone, if there's someone listening today who has not committed their lives to you, who has not reached out and followed you, who has not responded to your leading, Father, we pray, I pray, that you will give them the grace to come to you, to come to you and find life in all its fullness. And Father, for those of us who have been a Christian for maybe for a long time and sometimes grow cold, grow weary, Father, would you make us hot for you. Shake off the lethargy, Lord, and make us sparkle and shine for you, full of your energy by the power of your Spirit. And Father, let us shine like stars in the universe as we hold out the words of life, as we hold out hope to others who do not know you. Lord, we know that's hard. Some of us find it very hard um, to do that kind of thing. We're frightened by it, intimidated by it. But we pray, Lord, that if we're meant to do that, that you will give us opportunity, that you will open up the door and give us the words to speak your words of life, simply and gently. Father, help us to shine for you. So, Lord, keep our eyes fixed on you. Keep our hearts warm for you. Keep our feet moving forward for you. So, Father, for those... Um, those of us watching today, we pray your blessing. Father, we pray to keep people safe. We pray blessing on our health service, on our doctors, our nurses. We pray blessing on, on our business owners uh, and those who employ people and for workers. Lord, these are challenging times for so many. Please be gracious to us. Lord, we look forward to a time when we're free of restrictions free of fear, when we can talk about something else. Father, lift our eyes towards you, our amazing God, who does amazing things in amazing ways. Father, thank you that you're the light. You're the light to this world. Help us to stay close to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So, thank you for joining me today. Um, we'll have our service live, or not live, it'll be pre-recorded, but it'll be on our YouTube channel, Grace Downs Presbyterian Church, 11 a.m. We're looking at the book of Revelation. We began last week. This week, we're looking at the second half of chapter 1, verses 9 to 20. Um, it'd be great if you read that um, and just got a feel for what it's saying. And if you're not a member of our church and you'd like to join us, all our stuff is on our YouTube channel. Um, and it would be lovely if it could be a blessing to you also. So I think that's all I need to say today. So whatever you do, whatever the afternoon holds, be blessed.